Hey traders, Richard K here from Price Action and Income and welcome back to this week's video. I quite often get a lot of um, questions about the only indicator that I use uh, and why I do prefer using this indicator. And as you can probably see in the bottom panel of my chart over here, it is the MACD, which stands for Moving Average Convergence Divergence. And uh, I'll just quickly be delving into some of the features of this um, indicator, why traders tend to use it and how I like to use it. So firstly, um, the MACD basically, as you can see in the screen here, consists of three different chart objects, if I can say that. Um, we have these bars, in my case, on TradingView, uh, or what we call histograms these ones going up in green and these ones going down in red obviously it can be changed to any color you guys would prefer but that is called the histogram part of the macd and then as you can see on uh, this blue line over here is what is called the actual macd line and then we have the orange line here i know some guys try to or like to color that in red which is called the signal line so if I just quickly bring up the actual settings uh, that make part of the MACD, like you've seen before, or like I mentioned before, sorry, um, I do have the histograms, which are over here, colored in this sort of sea green color, and uh, the when it goes down on the histogram side in red. Then we have the MACD line, which is in my case blue, and then a signal line, which is in orange. And then we also have uh, the inputs, we are, which are all exponential average lines. Um, if I just quickly delve into that, um, you'll see that the actual MACD line, which is one in blue, is based on a 12 period EMA, which stands for exponential moving average minus a 26 day EMA. Now, obviously, it depends on which chart or time frame you're actually using this on. Uh, for today's uh, explanation, we're just going to use the daily chart of Bitcoin US dollar. And then the signal line, which is this orange one on my chart, is actually a nine period exponential moving average of the actual MACD line. So, guys, um, it might sound quite confusing. I know a lot of traders kind of uh, tend to break their heads around about which exact settings to use, but um, I just use the standard default settings, uh, which is the 12, 26, and the 9. And then the source is basically based on the closing price of these actual candles on the daily time frame, as we've shown before. Then your MACD histogram is basically your MACD line, your MACD line minus your MACD signal line. And if I just can quickly show you, as soon as you have your MACD line cross below your signal line, you'll see that your histograms will plot below a center zero line in this case. So whenever it crosses above, in this case again the MACD line crossing above your signal line, you'll have your histograms plotting to the upside or above the zero line instead. So basically this is just a trading indicator which was uh, created uh, according to Wikipedia by a guy called Gerald Apple in the late 1970s. And it basically was designed to reveal changes in strength or direction and momentum and duration of an actual trend. Now, as you all know, um, I like to use market geometry to find the end of corrections and then whenever a correction ended, try to trade then with previous trend when the trend would uh, resume again. Um, so I will just be using a MACD pretty much to spot a slowdown in momentum as price basically approaches a level of market geometry that I'm interested in taking a trade at. So I basically just use the MACD indicator as a confirmation or entry confirmation signal before I would enter into a trade. And I use the MACD and the MACD primarily for momentum divergence, which is basically a simple term for, as I'll show you right near, right here, is that whenever, let's say, in this example, Bitcoin US dollar from this previous high in June, started trading lower, you'll see that after that high, momentum on your histogram side tends to be quite strong. And this is very common whenever a trend or a correction actually starts. 
but as price then in this case moves downwards we had some sort of like ending diagonal pattern going on here yes this was a little bit um, after the fact you'll see that as price starts moving lower into a low you'll see that your momentum was starting to dry up and this is where the term momentum divergence comes in and particularly why I use this indicator to spot actual trend running out of steam in this case. Um, now I didn't take this as a trade. Uh, you all know that I use market geometry. But this is a good, good indication of, for example, we have a sort of a trend moving downwards. It's moving into a sort of a wedge formation towards an end. And as it actually made this final low, we had momentum divergence and all it basically refers to is that although price was moving into one direction the momentum as price was moving lower started getting less and less into this low and then price reversed to the upside again now guys obviously um we have another one here um, in this case we probably just had some sort of an abc to the upside before we had another move to the downside again just an example in this case, a channel line would have perfectly caught this high over here. And here we have, again, momentum starting off pretty strong. Um, it goes into an high. And from that high, we start seeing a decline in momentum into an actual area of market geometry or level of market geometry before price starts moving or started moving lower again. Uh, in my opinion, this was just a simple A, B, C, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, A, B, C, into that high here. And as you all know, I just like using my market geometry. And if you would have drawn that, let me just zoom into this chart for you. Then either the upside or the channel or this upper median line of this uh, pitchfork is where this correction ended. And in this case, we also had momentum divergence. Now, I'm also aware that uh, there are a lot of traders that actually look for divergence within the MACD line and the actual signal line. But as you'll see in this scenario, there was no divergence. I, it didn't start making lower lows as price was moving to the upside. So I prefer using the actual histograms to show me um, what is actually happening with the momentum side. And um, there's one reason why I do use this combination with uh, market geometry is because you'll quite often find that if you are dealing with a strong trend that you can see momentum divergence happen over a long period of time before you actually get a some sort of reversal. I mean, you had a MACD um, momentum divergence between this low and this low, for example. Let me just draw that in for you. And although, guys, just saying again, although I didn't try this, um, if you would have known that we're dealing with some sort of ending diagonal, um, then you probably wouldn't have taken this trade here. But although we did have momentum divergence, in this case also between the MACD and the signal line, price went up. Even if you did take this trade, maybe you would have taken some profits. But eventually price started moving low. And if you knew this was some sort of ending diagonal or had some sort of inclination that it might be, then you had another opportunity when price actually showed up as momentum divergence at this low over here. Um, it's also quite important that you use um, the MACD on different time frames or multiple time frames as your part of your analysis, because quite often you will find momentum divergence popping up on a lower time frame firstly before you'll see it on a higher time frame. In this case, just on a daily, we had some great instances of where price actually reversed from an area of market geometry on momentum divergence. And guys, this works on really any market. Um, but like I said, you, you can have a lot of false signals, um, depending on what you look at, either the histogram or the actual MACD and the signal line. Um, but uh, just be careful that, uh, for me, it just makes up as part of my strategy and more importantly, part of my entry conditions that I need to see before I will take a trade. If I do not see momentum divergence into a high or low at the end of a correction, and I do especially not see this on any one of the lower time frames that I follow, then I simply would not enter. Uh, there are some extreme cases though, for example, when we're dealing with an expanded flat, which is a quite a volatile uh, type of correction, where you'll tend to get a 
fast, hard moves in one direction and immediately V-shape or V-bottom change of direction to the other side. And in those cases, you have to make special allowance for not relying too much on the MACD itself. But just guys, for those that quickly, my new members, um, just showing exactly why I like to follow MACD. There are way more um, examples of this if you follow my work. I've also done a previous video on the MACD where I delved a bit more into this, showed you some more examples. But just a quick example here on the Bitcoin US dollar, um, especially when you start also understanding how you how these type of corrections move by looking at um, the price pattern that's revealed with the market structure in combination with your market geometry, then this was a great example between your A and your C wave where you had momentum divergence. And yes, you could have taken a trade over there and traded to the downside. Again, guys, if this just happened here up in the air and I didn't have any of my market geometry lines drawn, then it's something that I would not consider taking at all. Right guys, just a quick recap of what the MACD is, why I use it. Uh, it's a very powerful indicator, a very popular indicator. And in my case, it's also the only one that I use. Um, you'll quite find that the more experience you get, the, the more traders rely on following price action uh, because they have a good feeling of how markets tend to behave. Um, I'm, and I also only use one indicator, like I said before. Uh, it, uh, beginner traders quite often start with multiple indicators. Um, one uh, big mistake that they often make is that they will have too many of the same sort of uh, indicators. In this case, the MACD is an oscillator. So if you do trade with more than one indicator, and especially when you're a beginner trader, make sure that you don't use two different oscillators, for example, that kind of might show you the same thing uh, and maybe result in giving you false signals. All right, guys, so that was just a quick short video of the MACD. Um, if you would like to know a bit more about my trading strategy or you're new to this channel, then please read the description below this video. And please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the alert notification bell for the next video, which we try to release once a week. Okay, guys, thanks very much. I hope you have a great rest of your week. Until next time, this is Richard K from Price Action Income. Goodbye.